teachers and welcome to your math lesson for today. Before we get started, today you will need your 5A textbook, your 5A workbook, paper, pencil, or a whiteboard, whiteboard marker. Any of those are acceptable. So fifth graders, we're going to do a quick little practice before we do our warm-up and this kind of builds off of yesterday or the day previous lesson about multiplying by tens hundreds thousands and I taught you the way the format that I want you to use when you're multiplying and I do think that that is a great format that I want you to continue to use but I also just want to really emphasize if you're multiplying by 10 or 100 or 1,000 to keep the process as simple as possible. So for instance, um, if you're multiplying by 10, you're really just going to add one zero. That's confusing. Let's try that again. Add one zero. If you're multiplying by 100, you're going to add two zeros. If you're going to multiply by a thousand, you want to add three zeros. And really that's going to continue to be the case, right? One, one, two, two, three, three. If we multiplied by 10,000, you can probably guess we would add four zeros and so on and so forth. So, Truly, if we're doing just multiplying by a 10, a 100, or a 1,000, we should be able to just add zeros, okay? So 592 times 10, we're going to add one zero, okay? 437 times 100, we're going to add two zeros. Even if we had, let's say, 65, times, I don't know, 10,000, we have one, two, three, four zeros. So we have 65 plus four zeros, okay? Now, if we have something that, if our digit here is not a one, then we definitely wanna follow the process from before, which is where, let's say we did, I don't know, 300 times 6,000, we're gonna follow that process where we're putting boxes, underlining zeros, we multiply our facts and then add one, two, three, four, five zeros, okay? So for today's warm up, we're gonna work on that. I would like you please, and this should be a pretty speedy warm up exercise for you to do these four multiplication problems and really shoot to do them as speedily as you can. And when you're done, Press play and come on back. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so remember what we just worked on. We're gonna keep this very simple, right? 317 times 10, we have the same number plus a zero. The same number here plus two zeros. The same number here plus three zeros. And then this one requires just a titch more thinking. Five times three is 15 plus one, two, three, four, five zeros. Okay? All right. So today's lesson, we're going to be dividing by tens, hundreds, and thousands. Okay? So we'll be kind of building off a little bit of what we were working on yesterday. So first, like yesterday, I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of examples of what this might look like and see if we can notice patterns at all. And then we'll go on and look at the notes that we have in our math resource binder. Okay, so let's just say, for instance, we're going to be doing 2,300 divided by 10. So just to demonstrate, we're going to do the long division. 
when we learn this rule, I absolutely would never want you to use long division in order to solve this problem. But just to demonstrate the rule, I'm going to do that, okay? So 10 does not go into 2, so we put that x there to remind ourselves of that. 10 goes into 23 twice with a remainder of 3. We bring down our 0. It goes into 30 three times. We bring down our 0. It goes into 0 zero times. So, 2,300 divided by 10 equals 230. So we kind of are going to be observing, right? These digits are staying the same. We have one more zero, and then this one gets crossed off. And you're going to notice, hmm, there's one zero here. So we end up losing a zero there. If you're kind of thinking about yesterday's lesson, maybe your mind is starting to turn a little bit already about that. Okay, so let's say we did 3,200 divided by 100. Again, when it comes down to it, I would not want you to solve this using long division, but for now. So 100 does not go into 3 or 32, but it does go into 320 three times with a remainder of 20. And we bring down our 0, it goes into 200 two times with no remainder, so our answer is 32. We start to notice. 32, 32, and then we have, we got rid of these two zeros and notice, huh, two zeros, okay? So now I really hope you're thinking about what you're observing. Let's say we did 45,000 divided by 1,000. So for the purposes of demonstration, 1,000 does not go into 4, or 45, or 450, but it does go into 4,500. With a remainder of 500, we bring down our 0, and it goes into 5,000 five times, with no remainder. So our answer is 45. And so again, we have these same digits appearing. There are three zeros here, and we got rid of three zeros. So in terms of rules, if we're dividing by a 10, what that means is we're going to remove one zero, kind of building off of what we were working on before. If we're dividing by a hundred, we want to remove two zeros. And if we're dividing by a thousand, we're going to remove three zeros. If we were to expand that, if we're dividing by 10,000, we want to remove four zeros. If we're dividing by a hundred thousand, we would remove five zeros. Okay, so this is going to be a part of our practice as we're dividing by tens, hundreds, and thousands, removing those zeros. So um, in our textbook, we're going to jump into our textbook first before we get into our math resource binder. We're going to do some practice just with what we worked on there. Okay? So you'll need paper and you'll need the textbook. We're going to be looking at page 26 in your textbook. So you want to open to page 26 and then have paper and pencils so that you can work along with me. So. Remember our rules where, we're re where we are removing zeros. So 1a, I was using long division to show this, but I do not want us to do long division. That would be not worth our time. So what we're going to do, we're dividing by 10, which tells us that we're removing one zero to get our answer. It is that simple, okay? B, we're dividing by 100, so we're going to remove two zeros. Again, it is that simple. C, we're dividing by 1,000, so we're going to remove three zeros. So any time that we're looking at it being 
a one in this place, we're going to just remove zeros. So I'm gonna give you a couple of practice problems to try. And then you can come on back and see how you did. So your first practice problem, I would like you to do, I don't know, 40 or 4,700 divided by 10. Do 56,000 200 divided by 100 and let's do 523,000 divided by 1,000. So pause, solve each of these problems. When you're done, come on back and see how you did. <clears throat> so remember, we're dividing by 10, which means we remove one zero. We get 470. Dividing by 100, we remove two zeros, so our answer is 562. Dividing by 1,000, we remove three zeros for 523. How'd we do? Hopefully okay. So fifth graders, we're gonna look now in our math resource binder. This is gonna be the bottom half of the notes that we looked at in our last lesson. Oops, that's language arts. And Look at what happens if we're dividing by something that is a multiple. So it's not one, but we're looking at maybe two or three or four, okay? So here's our notes if we're dividing by tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. okay? If that number is not a one, what does that mean? So for instance, in this case, I'm looking at 24,000 divided by 24 million, excuse me, divided by 3,000. So step one is to identify which of the two numbers has fewer zeros. And then you're going to cross out that many zeros in each number. And these zeros really need to be at the end of the number. So in this case, right, we see this number has six zeros. This has three zeros. So this one has less. So if there's three zeros, we're going to cross out one, two, three here and then one, two, three here. So we're gonna get rid of those extra zeros. If they share them, we can remove them. Next, we wanna put a box around the numbers of the digits that you're gonna divide. So in this case, we did this with our multiplication, right? 24 and three, this is what we're going to divide. Next, you're going to be underlining the remaining zeros. And I want you to note this should only be in one number. If you did this correctly, you shouldn't be crossing zeros out of both numbers. So in this case, I underline my three zeros. Now we can solve our division problem, 24 divided by three, and that's eight. And then finally, we're gonna add back those three zeros. One, two, three, one, two, three. So our answer is actually 8,000. So again, we should be able to solve these problems without doing long division, okay? I would keep these notes out in front of you. They're going to guide us as we're working on our more practice for today okay so keep those notes handy so we're going to get back into our textbook and keep working on our practice problems now that we're dealing with something that is not one right we're talking about not 100 but 300 for instance okay so keeping that textbook handy we're going to do some more practice so looking at number Two, which is asking us to divide 15,000 by 30. So if we look at those notes that we just went over, we want to figure out which of these numbers has fewer zeros. This one has three, this one has one. So this has fewer zeros. And we're going to cross out that many zeros. So we can cross out one zero here, and then only one zero here. Okay, because we have one here, we can only cross out one here. Now we put a box around our division problem that we're going to solve. And we underline our zeros. 15 divided by 3, you should be able to do in your head. 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then we add 1, 2, zeros. So our answer is 500. Look at that. Okay. Now we're being asked to divide 15,000 divided by 300. Again, we want to figure out which one has fewer zeros. It's 300. So we're going to cross out two zeros here and two zeros here. 
Now we put a box around our division problem and underline those zeros. 15 divided by 3, turns out it's also 5 again. And we're going to add in our zero, which is just that one. So we should get 50. Now we're being asked to divide 15,000 by 3,000. This is a great reminder, if you are not working along with me, you should be. This is our great practice, okay? In this case, both of our numbers have three zeros. So we're going to cross out three here, three here. We want to put a box around our division problem and then underline any remaining zeros. Turns out there are none. So now our answer is 15 divided by 3, which is 5. Okay? We're going to continue practicing using the same process. This is the process that we're going to use for our division. <clears throat> so number 3, 2,800 divided by 40. Okay, we have one zero that we can cross out from each number. We put a box around our division problem and underline the remaining zero. Now we think, what's 28 divided by 4? That's right, it is 7. And how many zeros are we going to add? 1. Our answer is 70. Let's try B. 640,000 divided by 800. How many zeros can we cross out in this problem, fifth graders? Two in each of our numbers. That's right. Now we put a box around what we're going to solve for our division problem. And we underline those remaining zeros. 64 divided by 8. That's right, it's 8. And how many zeros can we add back? 2. So you should get 800. Okay, we have one more where we're going to find the exact answer, and then we're going to talk about estimating. So our final problem here, I'm trying to get it so we can see it, is 20 million... divided by 5,000. So how many zeros can we cross out? One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, so now we have to be careful when we're putting boxes around because up to this point we've been looking only at non-zero digits. But if you did two and five, can we divide two by five and get a whole number? No. So in this case, we want to put our box around 20 and 5. And then you underline just these three zeros. And this is why it's really helpful to make sure you're doing the box and underlining so you're not accidentally adding back too many zeros. 20 divided by 5 is 4, adding three zeros. All right, fifth graders, we are moving on to estimating. Remember what we said before, when you're estimating, you have to be paying attention to your divisor and then making sure that you're rounding the dividends smartly. So we're estimating the value of 29, excuse me, 29,920 divided by 380. So step one is to round. We always want to start by rounding the divisor. This is what's going to tell us what to do here, okay? So first of all, we want to round the divisor. And again, make this as simple as you can. So 380, unless you're told otherwise, you want to round to the greatest place value. So we're going to round 380 to 400, okay? Now, we're going to focus on this digit here to help us figure out what we should be rounding to here. So we want to focus on rounding this number so that these first two digits are divisible by four. So what is the closest number to 29 that is divisible by four? And actually, if you look up here, it helps you. So we're going to round this to 28 and then everything else to the right of it becomes a zero, OK? 
Okay, now we can follow the steps from before. We can cross out two zeros in each place, put a box around the multiplication or the division fact we're going to solve, and then underline remaining zeros. 28 divided by 4 is 7, and we add a zero to get 70. Okay, we have to follow the same process as we're doing our estimation, or it's not going to work as easily as it should. We want to make our lives as easy as possible. So we're going to do some more estimating. We're being asked to estimate 63,980 divided by 81. So again, round your divisor first. Make your life simple. Round 81 to 80. Now we're going to focus on this number and these two numbers. We have to round the first one, our, di our dividend, smartly. We can't just round it to the greatest place value, otherwise it's not going to necessarily work for us. So what is close to 63? That is a multiple of 8. The closest number to 63 that is a multiple of 8 is 64. And then everything else is going to become a 0. Now we follow our steps. We can cross out one zero in each number. We're going to put boxes around our division problem and underline those zeros. What is 64 divided by 8? It's 8. And how many zeros do we add? 2. So you should get 800. Let's do B together, and then I'm going to ask you to try C on your own. So 22,050 divided by 340. Again, we are estimating our answer. So we start by rounding our div uh, divisor. Make your lives as simple as possible. We're going to round it to 300. Now we focus on this and these. What is the closest number to 22 that is a multiple of 3? I hope you were thinking 21. The rest become zeros. Now we can follow our process. We cross out two zeros here, two zeros here. Put a box around our division problem and underline our remaining zero. 21 divided by 3 is 7. And how many zeros do we add? 1. Fifth graders, I would like you to try part C on your own. Pause. When you're done, come back and see how you did. Hopefully you remembered, fifth graders, that we need to round our divisor first, and we are working to make our lives as simple as possible. So what are we going to round this to? 7,000. Now we focus on this digit and these two digits. What is the closest number to 63 that is divisible by 7? Turns out it's 63. Everything else becomes zeros. Now we put a box around. Actually, I forgot our first step. We need to cross out these zeros. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 63 divided by 7 is 9. So our estimate is 9. All right, fifth graders. We did a lot of practice, but you're going to do some more. So um, I've attached a practice exercise, which you're going to complete. Again, do it on a piece of paper. When you're done, go back and check your work with the key provided. I'm going to say it again and again. The key is not there so you can just like find the answers really quick and not think about it. The key is so that you can look and say, oh, I got that one wrong. Why did I get that one wrong? How am I going to check and try to correct my work? If you are not able to correct your work, and when I say correct your work, I don't mean that you got a seven and it was six and so you just cross out seven and write six. I want you to go back into the problem and figure out why is it six? What did I do wrong so that you can learn from your mistakes, okay? After you have, and then of course, if you can't figure out what, where your mistakes are happening, then you should ask for help or come visit office hours. Mr. Tom, and I are both ready to answer your questions, okay? 
After that, you're gonna go into your workbook. You're gonna be working on pages 18 and 19 in your workbook, and you're gonna take pictures of those problems and submit them. Remember your ABCs, right? You should make sure that all of your work is in the picture, that it's bright enough, close enough, and still enough. Fifth graders, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll be looking for your work.